Hi everyone, I'm Ranger Isaiah, and welcome back to Reading with a Ranger. Now last week we talked about Frederick Douglass. Now Frederick Douglass stated that, let the black man get upon his person the brass letters U and S. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pockets. And there is no power on earth which can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship in the United States. Now, Douglas made this argument during the United States Civil War. But 80 years later, during World War II, African Americans still did not have the same rights as everyone else in America. Now, today we're going to read a story about the Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen were airplane pilots that fought in World War II. And we're going to see the different tasks and jobs that the men and women participated in while they helped the United States win World War II. Now, without further ado, here's our story. and sit near. The adventure is here because it's reading with a ranger. The Tuskegee Airmen Story by Lynn M. Holman and Thomas Riley, illustrated by Rosalie M. Shepard. The Tuskegee Airmen Story What are you kids doing? Grandma asked. We're just playing with this really neat stuff we found. What is it all? Oh, Joshua, Grandma answered. Those are all of Granddad's World War II things. His old uniform, his leather flight helmet, his medals. He was a real hero, you know. A Tuskegee Airman. Get him to tell you about it. Granddad, Grandma says you were in a war and that you're a Tuskegee Airman. What's a war? Joshua asked. And when was it? Asked Krista. What's a Tuskegee Airman and how did you get to be one? Asked their friend Charlene. Well, kids, Granddad answered, Let's all go sit down, and I'll tell you about it. Do you know how you and your sister sometimes fight with each other, or how you sometimes get into arguments with your friends? Well, a war is a great big disagreement between entire countries or whole groups of people. The war that I was in happened a long time ago even before your mother and dad were born, Granddad added. Back when I was just 20 years old, America, England, and France were involved in a really bad dispute with Italy, Germany, and Japan. That fight lasted for several years and was called World War II. Every American, young and old, wanted our country to win the war and tried to help in all kinds of ways. Some young men and women joined the arm, Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, or the Marines. Others, like me, joined what's now the Air Force, but was called the Army Air Corps back then, Granddad continued. What did you do in the Army Corps, Granddad? Krista added asked. Were you a pilot? Did you fly an airplane? Yes, honey, I did. Although for a long time, I didn't think I would be allowed. Even though I was already licensed as a civilian pilot, the men in charge of the American military didn't believe that black people could do things like fly airplanes. But why, Granddad? Well, Krista, that's how it was back then. 
African Americans were only allowed to do really common types of jobs in the military. In fact, the United States was a segregated country. That meant that black people weren't allowed to go certain places or do lots of things that white people could do. We couldn't have the same jobs, drink out of the same water fountains, or even eat in the same restaurants. But you changed all that, right, Grandpa? I mean, we can go anywhere and be anything we want to now, Joshua added with a smile. Well, it took a long time, Joshua, and a lot of people to make it happen. But you're right. The Tuskegee Airmen proved the African Americans could fly airplanes and do lots of other jobs really well. And that helped to change things. Back in 1941, the Army Air Corps set up a special program at Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama to give African Americans a chance to fly in the military. Training was really hard. We had to learn about weather conditions, military procedures, how to read a map, all kinds of different things besides how to fly an airplane. A lot of guys who were good flyers were washed out or eliminated, but some of us made it through and graduated. What about Grandma? She was at Tuskegee, asked Joshua. She sure was. Women like Grandma wanted to do their part to help win the war. They worked in lots of jobs. At Tuskegee, they were nurses and parachute riggers. Some women worked in offices or at guards at the base. Several worked on the airplanes and in the flight tower at Moton Field, where we first learned to fly. Were all of the Tuskegee Airmen pilots? asked Charlene. No way, Charlene. While some of us were learning to be military fighter pilots, other guys were being trained as mechanics or they were working in the offices. Some men loaded weapons. Others kept the trucks running or made sure we were fed. There were hundreds of different jobs and they were all important, Granddad continued. As soon as there were enough of us to fill three more fighter squadrons, we were sent to Europe to join the first group of Tuskegee Airmen, the 99th Fighter Squadron. Benjamin O. Davis Jr. was our commander. Our four squadrons were called the 332nd Fighter Group, but we were nicknamed the Red Tails because the tails on our airplanes were painted bright red. Did you win a lot of battles? asked Joshua. We did, son. Our biggest job was to protect the bomber planes from enemy fighters that were trying to attack them as they flew. We did a really good job of it, too. We flew more than 1,500 missions and destroyed lots of enemy airplanes, supplies, and equipment. I remember one time we escorted American bombers all the way to Berlin, Germany, a round trip flight of 1,600 miles. Our ground crews worked all night long to get the planes ready for that mission. They even had to install special fuel tanks so that we'd have enough gas to get there and back again. Everybody really worked together to make us successful. Did the Tuskegee Airmen fly bombers too? They did, Krista, but their training took longer than ours did. Before the African-American bomber crews had a chance to go overseas, the war had ended. They fought lots of battles, though, just as we did, against the rulers that kept black people from doing things here in America. We're all Tuskegee Airmen. So was Grandma a Tuskegee Airman too? asked Joshua. She sure is, 
Granddad responded, Everybody who took part in the program is a Tuskegee Airman. As is she a hero like you, Granddad, even though she didn't get any medals? Krista added, Everybody who helped America to win the war was a hero, honey. Some people fought America's enemies in the battles overseas. Others fought for freedom at home. The Tuskegee Airmen proved that African Americans had the ability to be successful, not just as military pilots, but in all kinds of ways. They never gave up. They never stopped trying to be the best. That's what Grandma and I wanted you kids to do. We will, promised the kids. And Granddad, we're really proud of you and Grandma and all the other Tuskegee Airmen. The end. Now, what an amazing story of patriotism. Now, the Tuskegee Airmen did not have equal rights within the military. And Abraham Lincoln presents this in his final public address in 1865. He stated, it is also unsatisfactory to some that the elective franchise is not given to the colored man. I would myself prefer that it were now conferred on the very intelligent and on those who serve our cause as soldiers. Now Lincoln believed in fair equality for African Americans. And 83 years later, Harry Truman would sign Executive Order 9981 in 1948. And this executive order would give fair treatment to African Americans within the military. Now over this time, there's lots of different things that happened to African Americans. And the African Americans during the 1900s would see a dawn of a new civil rights leader. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Reading with the Ranger. Once again, I'm Ranger Isaiah, and we'll see you next time.